Hey guys, the Books here again. Welcome back to Gates of Hell. As always, hope you guys are doing good today. Now, today we're doing a river battle, and it turns out this could very well be the, the longest and most brutal battle we've done so far. I'm gonna try and, of course, let the battle do the talking, but uh, I'm afraid I might have to cut this video up into two parts. We'll simply have to wait and see. I just sat here and I kept working on it and it just got more and more insane and in the end like, why not? Why not make it over the top? It's a river crossing. They're not meant to be subtle. There's something medieval about this, like charging infantry across very poor terrain, uh, very open terrain. There's no cover in water whatsoever. You can't even lay down. Like if you're charging across an open field, you can hit, you can go prone and crawl, but you're going to drown if you do that here. So there's just something very, very gritty about charging across a river uh so there's something very medieval about this in a way or another um the germans are defending and the soviets are attacking and when i saw this map i was just particularly excited it's so gritty it's rainy it's wet and all the infantry is pretty much wearing great coats which i think is super cool so we're going to take a look at the german defenses then we're going to head over to the soviet side have a look at what they're bringing in today and then we're going to let this battle rip it's gonna be so good. I just want to extend a big thanks to the developers for allowing me to make these battles. It's been the most fun I've had making videos in years, I think. So thank you to all the developers behind Gates of Hell for making this a possibility. I can assure you, I'm loving it, and I do believe the people watching, which would be most of you guys, really enjoy this as well. And I think you're all excited to get your hands on this game. But here we go. So, uh, on the German side of things, we've got a trench line divided into two parts. Uh, they're pretty much mirrored in terms of firepower, but there are a few differences. This uh, German left side, we could call it, has a MG34 and a Lafette, and a 75 mil, 75, that's right. The Soviets have the 76 mil. Not sure what that one millimeter makes in terms of difference. But uh, the Germans do have this light infantry gun 75 mil here on the left side. And two mortars. This is the uh, 80 mil SGRW-34. I think that was the most common German mortar of the war. Um, a bunch of vehicles here that have been used to transport infantry and materi material to set this defense up. So I think that just adds a nice little ambient effect. Nice little visual. We have a Panzer IV F2 in the center with a 75 mil. Um, it's been uh, slightly um, entrenched, one could say. Uh, it's just here to hold the center and to be used as, this, as a static AT gun. Here on the right side, we have another MG34 Lafette, another 75mm light infantry gun. But on the far right, we have a half-track and some infantry in foxholes. We also have some uh, AT rifles at the ready, too. So, uh, we're looking at about... Ooh, it's hard to determine, but I'd say there's about 60 to 70 uh, infantrymen here on the German side, plus guns. Um, and the Soviets attacking today is going to number close to the thousands. And that is just... Let that sink in for a minute, you know? When I say brutal, it's not like just any battle. It's brutal for real. Um, and this scene here kind of reminds me of the... The end scene, or part of the end scene in, in The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, when they stumble across the American Civil War and walk right into a Union uh, a trench line, or, or a, it's a huge fortification. It's a trench system overseeing a river crossing, and on the opposite side you have the Confederates. This kind of reminds me of that vibe. Like here we have the Soviets. Uh, we have an officer here overseeing the river crossing itself and looking at the German positions. We have some super heavy 120 millimeter PM38 mortars. These guys, they bang. We got some 76 mil light infantry guns as well. Huge wheels here and tires. Perfect for the mud. Uh, we've got some heavy machine guns, some armor, some light armor that is going to be crossing the river today. The heavier armor is going to get bogged down in this mud, so it's best to just keep it light right now. And about 100 infantrymen here along the entire riverbed. Now, I did say 1,000, but don't worry, the battle hasn't begun yet, guys. So, you know, we're closing up on that five-minute mark. I do believe, in fact, I'm positive we're going to have to split this video up into two parts. So there won't be an, in an intro for part two, but there will be an outro for part two. So I will see you guys in the next video as well. Um, but, of course, I'm going to talk throughout the, the fighting here, but I'm not sure when I'll cut the video in half. So I can't do an outro in this one. So I'm just going to say goodbye, and I love you all for watching. 
And yeah, let's get the battle started. All right, guys, we're going to get the battle started. But first, I've positioned myself back here. And uh, I've decided to go with a wide camera angle to capture a lot in one frame so that I don't have to move around as much. This is a very spread out battle, so there's going to be a lot happening from left to right. And it's nice to get everything in one shot, especially when you're static like this, because it gives you a nice idea of what's going on. So we might remain static for a couple of minutes. I'm not exactly sure, but this is just something to behold. And I was in awe when I first saw this, and I think you will be as well. So this is going to be quite the enjoyable ride. So guys, strap in, and let's get the battle started. You can see the infantry charging on the left side as well, in a more shallow area of the battlefield. A lot of tracer fire being exchanged back there as well. We saw a light infantry gun fire away too. Very nice indeed. Oh, that was a nice barrage of mortar fire. We're going to see them impacting in just a couple of seconds. Here we go. Oh, that was so nice. That's going to blow away some of the cover. All right, guys, I think we can move now. I think we can pan ahead and just join the action up close. We got the tank set up here. One of the light tanks on the far right has been destroyed. Oh, that is some heavy machine gun fire right now. Two of these tanks here next to the T-70 in the middle have the douche gun this guy over here on the left side as well as, as its counterpart on the right side which has been destroyed has 20 mil that we will see firing every now and then oh some more accurate artillery fire there's going to bring down some of the trees near the trenches but the soviets are waiting more reinforcements i did mention thousands of men and i will stay true to my word today guys oh yes oh yes I love transports. I don't matter. It doesn't matter if they're marine or land-based transports. It's just life. Okay, comrades. They're going to drop off and they're going to join the battle. And this is one of many, many waves of reinforcements being added today. All right, let's have a look at the German perspective. How are they doing? Well, they've taken a lot of shots here. The, the light infantry gun is knocked out for sure dead crewmen nearby but the men in the trenches are still holding Stellung bleiben. you hear them screaming as well Very nice indeed, very nice indeed. All right, the half-track has been knocked out as well. One of the crew members is out on the ground firing his MP40. Oh, and that 20 mil is opening up. Shade off the Lafette, probably. Oh! And the Panzer IV is knocked out. That is devastating for the Germans. As much as I preach about long and brutal battles, 
while it is indeed brutal, I might not up uphold my word on it being long, as nothing ever goes according to plan. But this light infantry gun is still active, and that's very good for the Germans indeed. The mortars are active, and this left side of the trench is looking very much solid thus far. Guys, let's have a look at the Soviets attacking in the river. They've already made it across this early. Oh man, oh man. The mortars are going to be firing for full effect to try and bring these down. Light infantry gun firing away as well. We got infantry out in the water, and as I said, you can't really prone here. It's, it doesn't really work. The only people proning right now are the corpses dead in the water. We got the Soviets using the mud for cover as well. They're crawling up along the terrain, which is a beautiful part of AI thinking. Oh, T-70 down, and the tanks on the right side is down, so that is going to help the German left flank for sure. Another truckload of infantry was just dropped off. They're going to think twice about remaining behind that stone. Next shot might not land in front of it, so they're going to pull back. Very nice indeed. In fact, it looks like the, the Soviet AI, despite having done good work here on their left side, is still being a bit pushed back now. They're awaiting more reinforcements. The Germans are still holding firm. And look at this line of infantry over here, though. They've taken a beating as well. But they are continuing the fight. Artillery still impacting around here. Oh, big guns firing away. And now it looks like more infantry is trying to cross this open water here. What a bold move. And look at all the impacts in the water. Oh, the effects are so awesome. They're trying to battle the Germans at range. It might work, it might not work. Oh, that's a nice SVT 40. And the, of course, the Soviets are wearing uh, great coats as well. Oh, the bullets are landing everywhere. I haven't uh, changed the damage model in any particular way, simply because I, I do enjoy the ambience and the, the length that the, the battles uh, end up being how long the, the battles end up being rather grammatically correct uh, due to the slightly more forgiving damage model. Oh, but artillery, of course, that's a one-shot, one-kill situation. No one's going to survive any kind of artillery impacts or any kind of heavier gun impacts. So when they land, they slay. Oh, throwing infantry up in the air. Next wave of trucks arriving. But the Germans are nowhere quiet. They're firing away at full effect. Will the Soviets gain a foothold across the river, or will the Germans keep them on the other side? Find out in part two.